Don't pick it, you silly scatter it. <laughs> and so that was our big bad Brad. Um, you know, to Mr. Tomlinson, a musician, we should thank him again for good for being here. Yeah. I know, again, just talking about the, the, the generosity of Big Bad Brad. Yeah. You know, that, that consistency office that you visited, that Bradley owned, do you know that he has allowed the government just now to use that for at least 10 years as a community center wow. for the young people in that area? Yeah. That's what he did. That's big, bad Brad, you know? And I don't know how many people in here knew him when he was a little boy. And I say little boy, I think only one. And that's probably Churchill, Tanner kind of knows. They went to school together. Is Churchill still here? He left, but they, they, they were classmates. And so I think one before long, he has to tell some of those St. Augustine stories. Much has been said about the late Bradley Roberts. He was greatly respected, admired, and revered by many. Yet, you know, hated and reviled by some. Many of you who frequent the social media would have seen and heard the outpouring of sympathy, love, and quite frankly, and only in one instance, hate in the wake of his untimely passing on the 25th of October. What a date, 25th of October. The 25th was the day he was born. The only difference was his, the month was December. Many agree that Bradley was larger than life. A life both in politics and business. And as large as he was in life, he was also full of life, yeah. energetic, with a passion for helping others. And as I was, and as I was reminded by, by Pleasant, he had an eye for, <laughs> for beauty. And, he, and his wit always surrounded the beauties of our, of our <laughs> sapiens. <laughs> You know, and that brings me to just remind us all about what I call the richness of the human experience when we leave this earth, right? And that, when we leave it, you know, the richness of the human experience is that we leave memories, good memories, of what one may have said to you during their sojourn and pilgrimage here on earth. What you all would have done together, those are the good memories. And I know each and every one of you here would have had many good, fond memories of Bradley, even for what you would have heard and seen what you've done. He would have done, not even if you had the opportunity to shake his hands, but you knew he was there uh, fighting for you. And what was interesting, and I discovered, and just, he was a genealogist. He liked to find out who your people, he reminded me of my, my father. Even, the difference was my father only kept it in his head, but Bradley wrote it down and kept a, a log of it, as I call it, who your people, who your people is, who you are. And he can tell you from, to your great-great-grandfather, great-grandfather. I just discovered that his, his, his great-grandfather was named Ernest Lancard Bowen. And he, too, served in the Southern District of New Providence in Parliament. So he has a history of being in Parliament. Yeah. And his great-grandfather served for 14 years in our Parliament from 1911 to 1925. Oh, wow. That's something I just discovered. But our Bradley lived a full, purposeful, and colorful life. Whether he was perceived as a saint or a sinner, many were greatly shocked and saddened to learn of his untimely passing. I call Brother Roberts a dear and personal friend of long, long standing. I call him my parliamentary colleague. He's a fierce and was a fierce political warrior and a giant of a man in many 
many, many ways. Affectionately known, as you would have heard, Big Bad Brad, by friend and foe alike, for his commanding voice, fearless firebrand style of politics. Bradley kept an open garbage bin and was never shy about sharing its contents. He was well known and loved especially by our supporters for holding the government's feet to the fire and exposing what many considered acts of impropriety and malfeasance. Who could forget the revelation of the bounce checks by a company owned by the former Deputy Prime Minister Frank Watson, yeah. with his partner who lived right here in Grand Bahama at the time. Right. Or the airport paving contract that Brent Simonet was awarded to Hot that Brent Simonet awarded the Hot Mix, right? For which he was fired. Yeah, he's still getting contract. <laughs> and he had to he was fired for the first time. And who remembers the Long Island dossier revelation that stunned the governing f and The then Prime Minister Hubert Ingham came out and he started to say, loose lips, you know, sink ships, because he wanted Bradley to zip up, but Bradley just exposed that dossier. As a result of that, you recall, he was forced to get additional security as he suffered death threats in the lead up to the 2002 general election. That's, what, that's how he put himself out there for us. Even in retirement, Bradley's garbage bin remained open and active. He revealed not once, but twice, that Superwash had not paid the correct amount of customs duties and taxes on his washing machines and dryers running up to the 2017 general election. Now, beyond the bombast and his aggressive political disposition, Bradley was a nationalist at heart, yes. a staunch supporter of the progressive movement, and cared deeply for the country he loved, the Bahamas. This love of country was manifested in his public commentaries on talk radio, in parliament, and in the print media. He was also a loving husband, a supportive, caring, and loving father, and of course, a doting grandfather. He, before entering politics, he had a history of service, you know. My relationship with Bradley Roberts commenced sometime in 1971, when I was yet an article clerk studying law. I joined a Toastmaster, the only Toastmasters club at the time in the Bahamas. It was called Toastmasters Club 1600U. He was then a member, and he was serving as the treasurer. That was a club that Bradley said, I am trying, I'm in, it's a club I'm improving myself. I am honing my skills to my leadership skills, my communication skills, because I want to be able to help my fellow men. And to do that, I'm going to improve myself. And he was in, in that club for many, many years. And that's how I met him. And so we bonded from there. And he was my mentor in the club. And I always, he always expressed the pride of my accomplishment. Because when I met him, I was yet a student in law. And he used to you know, give me a little couple of dollars for lunch because, you know, studying law, <laughs> pleasant <laughs> as an article student. Right, and, he, and, he, and he encouraged me all along the way. The pride he held when I was admitted to the bar. The pride he had when I got nominated to run and the role he played in making sure that I was successful. And he has been one of my staunchest supporters in politics and in life that I could, could, I could have always relied on. Up to 11.30 on the 25th of October, I was still receiving emails from him. 
and encouraged me. And, and guess what? Something came out of the garbage can that he sent me at that hour, 11.25 a.m. on the 24th. The night, the night before, he was sending me the pictures, as you would have heard, about the town center mall and, and the state that it was in. Just continually just there, helping, helping me and ensuring that I kept myself focused and encouraging me on the way forward. And that if one thing I, I'm going to regret is that he's not going to be there when I take the oath. Yes. 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 But I'm going to do it for Big Bad Brad. Because I know he'll be looking down on me and saying, ah, that's my boy. Yes. I value and so cherish his enthusiastic and wise counsel. His counsel continued, as I said, after he would have retired from Parliament as our party's national chairman, and as I indicated during my, con my tenure now as a leader. I'm going to miss him mightily. You know, a little known fact about Bradley as well, you know, um, Obi spoke about his furlough in 1977 when he ran for the Progressive Party in Syria. That was interesting as well, because he was not the first choice. Make you remember, somebody else was nominated, was recommended to run, and the nominating committee's recommendation was overturned by council. That's the kind of council we need. Yeah. So if, if we come with something, if the committee comes and the council could stand up and say, no, fellas, you're all right here. We're going this way. And guess what? Look what happened though. The chairperson of the nominating committee accepted the decision of council. That's leader. That's the leadership. That was London at that time. And so, his extensive career in politics and as a public servant, as you well know, is well documented. He held many chairmanships. He was minister of, of works, and he, he did many, many wonderful things. Obi alluded to the fact that he, he ushered in and put us in place to be able to now compete technologically with the world. It needs a bit of upgrading. Right, and he's always cried for that. But this crew don't understand. They, the, the, I call it the circus, the circus clowns. <laughs> and and I, I'm about to think about Hubert Menace, because he's a menace on the pole, yes. and, and to our society today. Right, but at the end of the day, um, they just don't appreciate it. And we need to, get, we need to do this for Brad. You know, in community life, and as I indicated, he had a history of service. He was in Rotary, and in Rotary, you serve. In Toastmasters, you learn how to serve. He was also a member of the Royal Legal Lodge. He was, and I can say this to you unequivocally, that Bradley understood that if you live, you are the Lord's. If you die, you are the Lord's. So whether you live or you die, he, you are the Lord's. And he understood that carefully. He was a regular, not every, I think he was a Saturday, Saturday evening, at six o'clock service at St. Francis Church, he attended. He did not miss church unless he, was, unless he was otherwise out of the country. And he was an avid traveler, and he enjoyed his family. He took his family on numerous vacations every year. That's one of the things he's been trying to get me to do. Brave, you got to take vacation. You got to take the family on vacation. You have to, that's the only advice I've not followed yet. I think now that he's, I, Bradley, I'll start. Yes. <laughs> 
With his passing, the Progressive Liberal Party has lost a consequential voice of conviction on any number of issues of national import. He was certainly a drum major for peace, social justice, and equality. He was opinionated, passionate about the policies of the PLP and national development. We all will miss him. And yes, we will convey to the family, his wife, his three children, his grandchildren, our profound gratitude for allowing him to expose himself because Bradley took many lashes, slashes, cuts for the PLP and our people. And for that, we will extend our gratefulness and profound heartfelt thanks to the family. Obi was, had scheduled, was, scheduling, was scheduled to be here with us tonight, but unfortunately, he was unavoidably detained at the cabinet office uh, trying to complete the um, funeral arrangements, and he's asked to extend his apologies for not being here, but that he um, accepts and appreciates the fact that the Grand Bahama PLPs have decided to come together to honor his father. I could, I could announce tentatively that in Nassau, um, we, the, we will be holding a memorial service at PLP's headquarters on Thursday night, next week Thursday, next Wednesday, sorry. Next Wednesday, his body lies in state on the Thursday, and the funeral is scheduled to be on Friday. And at, at that time, we'll be Lying, laying our brother to rest. So with that, PLPs, you know, some 6.30? 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Okay, thank you. You know, uh, while Obi and I were sitting down, you know, Obi said, man, this is supposed to be a, it's supposed to be a, a memorial, man. I say, but you ever heard, you ever heard Bradley at a memorial? <laughs> you ever heard him? He, he couldn't. He couldn't resist the opportunity to punch, punch from one or two and then say, Lord, we are here. But as we think about our brother Bradley, one thing he always wanted us all to do, that is to stay together. And in all of our conversations since being elected leader, he says, Brave, we have to continue to stay together. Now, one thing he said with Grand Bahama, you all get together. Grand Bahama need to get together. And let's hope that the life of Bradley be the galvanizing factor and force that brings us together where we can forget all of our differences and just appreciate one thing, that together we are better. Together we are better. So PLPs, PLPs, PLPs. Thank you very much. And we can say tonight that Mr. Bradley Roberts paid his rent. He paid rent. I am Cassietta McIntosh, and it's been a pleasure being your moderator tonight. And the next voice you hear will be Miss Beverly McKinney, who will take us out with the benediction.